Hey, Chuck here at Garden Spot Acres. We got ourselves a project today. We're gonna be using some Buta stone, landscaping stone to edge our lot. Let's take a look at what that looks like. The pieces are approximately 48 inches long. We have left and right turns. Now this one would go on this way. It would extend the four foot piece out. Then you have the notch over here for your next long piece going back. On this side, the piece would go on like this. Then you would go back using that piece. Let's take a look over here how we're using this. Have a hedge row right here, all the way from the front of the lot to the back. And I'm gonna start here. It's about 140 feet to the back. And on the other side of the lot, over there on that side, it's about 145 feet. So we're gonna start here in the front and we're gonna lay this stuff in, come across the front, and we're going right along the side. And this side here. We're gonna start with that front piece where I go backwards on both pieces. So you have the front piece, then it takes the angle, right angle to the back, the right angle over here to the back. And we're gonna run a string once I get this piece in place straight back so I stay in the mulch area off the lawns. We're gonna do that on both sides. At the end of this video, I will share with you the cost of doing what we're doing here and the estimate that we got with curb stone and with cement block, the uh, cut face cement block. That would make like a block wall all the way back, two blocks thick with a cap. Let's take a closer look at these blocks. They, they're uncannily real looking and feeling. They got little bumps in them, look like real little stones. Looks like a sandstone. They have three different shades of these. Each four foot section comes with spikes. are solid steel spikes and they go right down the hole here the old style used to have a big hole here with a cap or a plug that filled that hole these go right down in between the stones and you drive that right into the ground take a look how much these are going to extend into the ground that whole distance right there that's like 10 inches into the ground so that's quite substantial i checked a couple different projects with these one of them has about 300 350 feet of this and boy it is solid and it's just sitting there on top of the ground staked into place and they have some uh, cobblestones behind it like river stones but the front is totally exposed like this right here and i try to move it they are solid Let's go ahead and get one of these in place at our uh, lot line over here and we'll install one then we'll go from there. I'm going to go ahead and anchor this one four foot piece on one side then I'm going to take a couple of measurements from the road so I can get this kind of square to the road. So we're going to drive this spike down. So I'll make sure that's square, perpendicular to the ground. Okay, I'll put this block in here. I don't have this stake in yet, I haven't measured yet. I'm not too worried about this front block here because once you get the sides on, it's gonna solidify this whole thing. 
and we'll measure from the road here just so that it's like parallel to the road I got like 16 feet there so I'm pretty good here just want to make sure this is perpendicular to the ground before I start banging this in and she's pretty solid and what we plan on doing when we're finished with this this is all going to be mulched in here quite deep probably three or four inches at least or maybe even five but on the outside we're going to get a nice load of uh, screen top soil and we're going to come up the outside of this maybe two inches fill in any of these gaps and then slope it down into the grass so this is going to be look like it's buried in the in the turf when we're all finished and the grass will go right up against it they're like a uh, sealed in there with some type of sealant that keeps them from falling out it looks like So this is going to slip right over top of that. I'm going to slip this one in here. I got to lift this back out of here and slide that over the top. There we go. I'm just going to tap these in. I drove stakes on the inside of the wall. I measured from the inside to the inside over here. It's 49 and 3 quarters. I put those stakes right into the corners. Then out in the back, back there, I lined up a stake with this front one as best I could. So that I wasn't over into the grass too much. And then I measured over 49 and 3 quarters and put the stake on the other side. So now we're just going to run a string. And I'm doing this on the inside because I'm going to be working on the outside. And I can just overlook the string and see if I'm staying lined up. So we're going to attach the string here. Run it back to there. And then I'm going to have to look to see if there's any uh, brush or anything in the way of the string being straight I don't want to go too high with my string because I'll be getting in the way of the the shrubs and stuff or I should say the shrubs will be getting in the way of the string okay make sure we run it right along this outside edge All right, made it back here. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna loosen up any. That looks pretty good. There. So I have to kick that over. Now you can see straight down there. Just need to kick that over. It looks like she's going to go in right about there. Looks like this piece here doesn't want to drive together for some reason. So maybe if I need to lift it up or something. There we go. That did it. I think I'm going to have to keep a brick handy here to put it under here. And 
drive them together. That's probably gonna do the trick, I think. Now I'm gonna look down through there, make sure this is lined up. Then we'll go ahead and put the spikes into here anyways. Then I can start again up here. Look straight down there and I need to kick them in. I'll try to give you a straight down view. Now I'm holding this so that when I drive this spike that she's perpendicular here. Okay, straight down again. That looks good. Let's see how well you can see. That looks pretty good right there. So I'll drive a few more in, put a few more lengths in. Then I'll be back with you in a couple minutes. Okay, I'm checking for perpendicular to the ground here. Just eyeballing that. The hardest part so far is getting these spikes straight down so they come out the hole on the other side. I like that. There is a little bit of undulation in the ground here and these are going over that fine. There is a little flex on these up and down. Welcome back. We got the whole first row of our edging done. Let's take a look at that. It took about, yeah, I would say somewhere between two and a half to three hours. And that included, I was digging out a little bit of sod here and there so they weren't sitting right on grass. So I think she's looking pretty nice so far. My wife really likes it. And it is able to flow with the, with the slope of the land. You know, obviously no lawns are perfectly level. We're probably running eight, 10 inches here from one end to the other, going back on a slope. But there's all sorts of little dips and valleys and things. And this is doing a great job following the slope of the land, you know, the contours. And it's really tight all the way back. This came out to be 145 feet. And we're getting near the end. And we curved it in here near the back gate here. And so you can see the kind of radius that you can make with this. Now they do make an end piece. And we're going to cap this off. We just don't have it right now. But they do make like one block end piece that'll slip onto that. It'll be a finished end. Now we're going to head on down the other side here. We got our string already in place. And here we are back at the front. Now, the way we did the corners, and I'm not sure if they have other types of corners or not. But going in this direction, coming across here, then going back, I was able to slide the pieces on top of each other. Now, the corners that I was given to make the right angles here, take a look at this. Get down to this end, and I have the slide-in notch, where on the other side, I had this. So I was able to slide right over the top of that. Now in order for this to work, I'd have to lift every one of these up and put them in. So I couldn't go ahead and spike these in the ground every, every piece like I did over here on this other side. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to put seven or eight of these together. So seven of them would make about 28 feet and place them together 
and then put that whole piece in as one unit. That way I could actually like in this piece here, for example, I'd be able to like spike back into here, leave this here unspiked, then just lift this piece up and go on with my next section. We just laid our spikes out here, approximately where they're gonna go in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook these other three to this line here. Then I'll just push the whole thing over, line it up with the string and start spiking it in. And when you're putting these together, give it a good whack. I'm just using a hammer. They're not split, they're not breaking or anything. If you wanted to use a rubber mallet, you could use that too. But when you're putting them together, don't tap on them. Just give them a good whack and they lock right down in place. Now I'll go ahead and slide this back. You can see how flexible they are. And you can make curves with these. Do you see the space in between each stone? That's how much you're able to flex these. We're gonna be doing a tree ring on this video to show you what kind of tree rings you can make with these. So I'll probably play around with it, make the smallest one I can, and then make one large enough. Matter of fact, let's just take a walk over and show you the tree that we're gonna be ringing. Got this pretty Japanese dogwood here. Obviously it's not doing anything yet, it's still April. But we're gonna come out five feet from the trunk basically making an 11 foot diameter circle. And I'm sure I can do that. That's gonna take what, 11 feet times pi, 30, about 34, 35 feet of those. So probably nine of those we'll put together and we'll make the circle here. But that'll be later on the video. If you're wondering how much these weigh, I think they're something like six pounds a piece. So they're not heavy at all. You know, six pounds for the whole four foot section. I think they're like 46 and three quarters or 47 and a quarter, something like that. I think it's gonna take more time mulching than it does, you know, putting these together. See, I have to lift this one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this over get it kind of on the line. Then I'll just look down the line like we did before and we'll slide it over until we're in the right place. I found sometimes these are pain to get in, but this one's easy. And to find the hole on the bottom sometimes is hard, but just play around with that until you find it. Now I'm gonna look down here, straight down on my string. That looks good right there. And I wanna make sure, like I said on the other side, I want to make sure this is perpendicular to the ground. I don't want a tilting. Now I think I'll move on down and skip a few. I think right there is good. I'll put one in right there. Now I don't know if you have rocky ground how well these would work. But I know in our soil you know, these could be three foot long and I would never hit anything. Matter of fact, they probably could be five feet long. We've dug foundation pillars and never hit a, never hit a pebble. And if you ever, what, you ever wonder why my channel is Garden Spot Acres, because Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is the, is the garden spot. I uh, look over top of that. That looks good there. able to slide this this soil is so loose in here this has had a lot of mulch over the years on, to, on this hedgerow a lot of mulch a lot of leaves a lot of stuff just composting down now you see that one's really tight so I'm gonna go in from the side there we go yeah going from the top might be hard if they're pinched together because they do 
these do uh, fluctuate this way or they're flexible this way. I'm going to put this one in and I'm going to go down that line and we're going to check to make sure I'm staying pretty good here. I came out here and my wife, I didn't tell my wife I was coming back out. But I think that method I'm using right now, it actually is easier than the other side when I put them in individually. You know, hop, pop all these together and lay them in and push them over and stake them down. Well, we're on to our third long section here. And this does seem to save quite a bit of time. Each long section is taking maybe 15 to 20 minutes, lining up with the string and driving all the spikes. But she's coming right along. gonna put the last section together when I get that together and put in we're gonna finish up with our end blocks all right made it to the end gotta make sure I grab the right end block here This end block gave me a little trouble here and it's because of those little tabs that are on the bottom that would interlock in here but this is not allowing me to go down you see how that's tight right up against here so that's not allowing that block to go on so I'm going to cut them off and then slide that end block on I just cut off a little nib there and there's one on the other side right there that I'm gonna reach in there and get. Let's see if that makes any difference now. Yep. That was it. And that's the way the end block looks. Now let's go on the other side over there, up there, and let's use this end block, see if that slips on any easier. So here's the other end block. There's the other end we're working with. So I would think this one's gonna slide right on without a problem. And 
and there it is all completed doesn't this look nice that's gonna take a bunch of mulch to get this mulch correctly Well, now let's go work on that ring around that dogwood tree. A lot of people were saying you couldn't make tight circles with these. Well, obviously you're not gonna be able to take one and make a circle. But let's take four of them, since they do come in a pack of four when you buy them individually in packs like that from Amazon or from Buda. So let's take a pack of four and let's see if we can make a ring out of four. I know I'm not going to, I'm going to need a lot more than four for that tree over there because it's 11 foot, 11 and a half foot diameter. Okay, got four of these laid out here. Now these can be arced. You can see the space in between here. So let's see how far you can do these. So that's, that's the size circle you can make, whatever that is. And we have to put some of them together to see if we can't make a complete circle here with these. So we're going to try four to start. And what I'll do is stake this one in. We'll arc it as much as I can. Then we'll put the other three and see if we can't connect it to make the circle out of four pieces. I'll leave that sticking out a little bit so I can take this out of here in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to arc it as much as I can. Hold it as best as I can. One good wackadoodle or three good wackadoodles. Trying to get the tightest circumference that I can here. That's two four foot sections. But I read a comment from somebody that said, oh, you can't make tight circles with these. I don't know what they were thinking. Were they gonna use two to make a circle? But I think you can use four. Let's keep working at it. There's three. You're not gonna be able to do three. I don't think. Wait a minute. I think three might be the minimum. I'm gonna have to pull a stake out here and see if I can't connect these two. Well, let's see if we can do three. Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't want to drive that in, but I just put three of those together. You have to play around with it a little bit to get it into a, a nicer circle. But if I were going to ring a tree with three of these, I would definitely do this outside the tree and just put, them, put the three together, leave it unhooked, then put it around the tree, and then get it nice and round. So this obviously could be more circular. It can be pushed out that way and, and pushed in. You know, just play it around with so you get three. You can make a circle with three of them. So that would be a 
12 foot circumference, about a four foot, a little less than four foot diameter circle. Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my nine together and do our 11 foot diameter circle. I just took all the stakes out and there's not a problem why you couldn't make a circle with three of these perfectly. Let me tip it up like this. Look how much give there is in that still. I'm rolling it like a wheel. Well, I think Buda engineered these pretty well. So they engineered so three could go in a circle. That's pretty neat. There, we have 11 of them hooked together now. If I was gonna do a long curb with these, I would definitely put these together like this in the string. Because if I was gonna do something like what we did over here with these stones, You could just put them together and then lay them all in together or like along this sidewalk right here time to put that around the tree and make it some sort of a circle All right, let me connect these. Then I'll jiggle this around and we'll get ourselves a circle. What would be the best way to do this? With a tape measure? Or just eyeball it? I probably will get a tape measure though. And just measure from a few points from the trunk here. Five feet. Five feet, five feet, six inches. Yeah, I'll get the rest of those stakes after, but we're evenly uh, spaced out here with the stakes. She looks pretty good to me. We're impressed with this Buda stone. It did a really nice job. You saw us put in right angles. You saw us put in the end caps, the straight stretches, and the circular ring around a tree. Next up will be the cost breakdown for this Buda stone. We had two hedges like this. We have that one over there. We're gonna install that one later, but it's enough for the video. So the two hedges that are exactly the same size, we had enough for this big circle here and enough for another circle, just a slightly smaller than this one out in the back. Well, I promise you the estimate that we got to do that landscape edging. And here it is. To do the landscape edging that we just did along both sides of the lot in a jumbo Belgian block set in concrete was $15,750. Now those jumbo Belgian blocks, they're about 10 inches tall, five inches wide, five inches deep, and they're set on end. And that would include 
a very shallow trench, a couple inches deep, a mortar mix put into the bottom of the trench, and then the Belgian block set into that. So that was $15,750. Now if I wanted grouting between the Belgian block, that was going to be an additional $1,800. Okay. Now, if we were going to go with a matrix block, which are the split face blocks, they have that look like stone on the front, but they're basically a cement block with a split face on the front, so it looks like stone. And that was going to be two of those deep with a, with a cap on top. And that was going to be for both sides of the lawn, just like this price was $37,475 for that so the Belgian block was about half the price of that split um, split face block okay now here's the the price on the Buda now the Buda is expensive but here's the total price that we spent on those Buda blocks right here. That included enough to do both sides of our lot, all the angle pieces, the right angle pieces, the end blocks, and it was enough to do an 11 foot diameter tree ring and a 10 foot diameter tree ring. So it was more than what this was because we're going to be able to get two tree rings out of this. And the total cost with tax, $4,679.98. Now to be fair, this price was also $30 for a four foot section. Where Amazon I think is $30, $37, thirty eight something like that. But this was on sale for $30 a section. And there was a one-week sale on it, 15% off of that. So you could add on uh, another $1,000, let's say, if you're going to buy this at full price. So at full price, it would be like $5,700, $5,800 compared to these prices over here. So I think we got quite a bargain, and I really like this Buta block. It looks nice. It goes in easily, and it is pretty solid. So I think it's going to last a long time. They say plastic lasts forever, right? This is a resin, some type of resin mix that they use. So we're very pleased with this. Well, what do you think? Do you think the Buda block is going to hold up? you think it's worth the price? Leave your comments down below. We'd love to read them. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for coming along on this one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.